Welcome back to our project here on Building Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Heath. I'm once again joined by Bill Graffin from MMSD. And Bill, hey, we're out at a pretty typical neighborhood here. Let's continue with our discussion on the problem that's confronting MMSD. Yeah, you know, we're all connected by sewers um, in our homes. And we really are trying to reduce the risk of basement backups and, and basements getting flooded during heavy rain. And one of the ways we do that is to disconnect foundation drains underneath the home drains that get all the water out from underneath your house to prevent damage to your basement and get those drains disconnected from the lateral. That's the pipe that goes from your house out to the street where it connects to the city sewer system and eventually makes its way down to MMSD. Okay, and so there is a lateral coming from the house to the main sewer line. Who owns the lateral? The homeowner. The it, homeowner does, so it's ultimately that homeowner's responsibility to keep and maintain that. Just like your driveway or your roof, yes. Okay, and as we talked about in a previous segment, the system is really being overfilled with this clean water, as you put it. It's water that doesn't necessarily need to go to a treatment plant. It, it's groundwater that ends up getting into cracks and pipes, and also water that gets underneath the house, gets into the foundation drain, and then some of them, homes built before 1954 that don't have a sump pump, they typically drain all that water from under their house into the lateral, which is the sanitary sewer system. So we want to disconnect that, put in a sump pump, get that water up and out of the house and onto your lawn instead of it going into the sanitary sewer. And again, you're not dissing drain tile because it's a very important component of any home, especially here in the Milwaukee area with all the clay and the, and the moisture that tends to be in the ground. We're just saying don't run that clear water into the sewer system because it's overflowing it. And so as big a problem as this is, each homeowner can do their part. We're all part of the problem and we're all part of the solution. And there are things that we can do. Some of them aren't cheap, but they are things that need to be done. And the communities are really kicking into high gear and, and making some of these solutions happen. Well, I appreciate you coming on, helping heighten the awareness to the problem. Right now, I'm gonna head downstairs, catch up with our licensed plumber, and learn more about the solution of capping off the drain tile system. All right. So Dennis, once you got here today, how did you know where to start the process, where to drill this hole? Well, we've come in before and investigated down here. We can see the check valve, which is the Palmer valve, inside the floor drain. So we know that the direction it's going to be going is right off of this line. So we'll just cut back about six, eight inches from the floor drain and open the hole right there, a little bit wider than what we need to for the pipe, so we can dig down and expose everything. So we have an idea of, A, where the main line comes in and if there's any other connections that come into it. Okay, and again, this is a pre-1950s house. It's not your typical drain tile, is it, that just no. goes around the perimeter? Correct, yeah. Nowadays, it's all around the interior perimeter of your house. This is more of a spider web type system where they just ran the drain tile and wherever they wanted to, probably off a bleeder, a line coming in to the floor drain, and they connect it from multiple areas. So we test piloted some holes in the first couple houses in the corner, figuring that's where the drain tile is going to be, but it wasn't there. So then we just headed over to the floor drain, found the the drain tile and then through process of just elimination you find out more and more drain tiles tying in the further away you get from the floor drain. And really at the end of the day you could have two, three, four, five different connections coming in but you're only concerned with back here. You're ultimately trying to seal this off Correct. as close to the floor drain as possible. Right, what we're going to do is take these two lines around their crock and we're going to cut this here and seal this Palmer valve so it's abandoned so no more surface water comes into the floor drain which goes to your sanitary sewer. Sure. And that reduces the load on the sanitary sewer out, out in the street. Sure, and that makes sense. Now, you cut out this hole, what are we looking at down here? Well here we're looking at a line that's coming in that we can see that's coming off the floor drain right away so we know that's there. We don't know at that point if there's multiple lines coming in or not. So we open it up and we see what we have, expose it and then see if there's anything close to it for connections. And if we have to put our crock, like say we're going to put this crock about five feet away, there might be more connections going in. So this one we can see two lines coming in right away. So we know we got one coming from this direction over here, okay. this direction. So we're going to have to tie both of those in somehow into where we're putting our crock. And even if there are multiple other lines coming in further back, that's not going to be a concern to you because right. you want to tie it off where it ties into the main right. sewer. Right. The closer 
to the floor drain the better here. In a lot of the houses, we can do that. This one's a little bit different, a little bit further away, so we're just gonna have to do a little bit more concrete cutting, open it up and see what we have, and investigate, and then locate our crock. Okay, well good. Well, why don't I get out of your way? We'll let you get going, we'll pick it up a little further along in the process. Okay. Building Wisconsin is made possible by the members of Plumbers 75, proudly serving their contractors and helping build Wisconsin for over 100 years. We all know the most basic form of life requires clean water to survive. On Earth, we need it to drink, cook, clean, and it touches just about every part of our quality of life. Here in Wisconsin, we appreciate the value of clean water even more as we live alongside the Great Lakes. Yet we often forget to think about how water gets to our homes, schools, and businesses, and then safely back to Mother Nature. Where does all the dirty water go? How is it fresh and clean every time we get a glass of water? Who makes this happen? The answer, plumbers. It's the plumbers who are trained, mentored on the job, and have progressed through a five-year education program that takes them from apprenticeship to a master of their trade. It's plumbers who are committed to a career and have been trained to protect the health and safety of our water system and make sure you never have to think about where it comes from and where it's going. Yes, we're fortunate here in Wisconsin to have an abundant supply of clean, fresh water but even more fortunate to have a highly trained and committed workforce to keep and deliver it that way. Plumbers 75, supporting the plumbing trade in Southeast Wisconsin for over 100 years. At Clearview Plumbing, they believe bigger isn't necessarily better. From new construction to remodeling, maintenance or repair, Dennis Nowak and his highly trained crew will get the job done right, on time and on budget. Serving southeastern Wisconsin for over 15 years, Clearview Plumbing specializes in residential and light commercial. Whether they're repairing a clogged drain, replacing a water heater, installing a new faucet, or capping off a drain tile system, Clearview Plumbing strives for excellence in everything they do. Clearview Plumbing and Plumbers 75, proud to be building Wisconsin. For more information on Building Wisconsin, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to watch additional episodes on YouTube or at our website, buildingwisconsintv.com.